Hey, I'm Dr. Jen Landa, OBGYN and hormone specialist. And today I want to tell you about the five things, hidden energy robbers that are crashing your energy. Energy is the most important thing that you need more of right now. No matter what you want to do in your life, if you want to get in better shape, get more healthy, lose weight, you need energy to do it, right? To get on that program, that diet, that exercise program, whatever it is you want to do, you need more energy to do it. Whether you want a better connection with your family, your partner, or if you want to get ahead at work, no matter what it is that you want to do, be, and achieve in your life, you need more energy to do it. People call me the Energizer Bunny, but you know what? It wasn't always that way for me. When I was only 28 years old, I went through what I would call my personal energy crisis. I lost what I now call my spark because when I was only 28, I was only married three years. I didn't have any kids yet. I was in my residency program to, to be an OBGYN. I was pretty close to the end of that. And it was then that I realized that I slowly had lost my libido over time. I just had no sex drive. I had no interest in sex, despite the fact that I was only married a couple of years. I'm only in my 20s. I'm an OBGYN and I had no idea what was going on with me. It got so bad that one time we were trying to be intimate and my husband just started screaming at me. What, what's wrong? Why, don't you love me anymore? Aren't you attracted to me anymore? And if you've ever lost your sex drive, you probably know that your answer might be the same as mine. No, you know, I didn't feel that I didn't love him or anything. I felt like there was something wrong with me inside of me. And, and I felt so lonely because I had no idea what was wrong with me or what to do about it. But we kept going and we went along and eventually we had a son. I had my baby boy, who's not a baby anymore, 15. Can't believe it. And, uh, but when I had that baby, I have to admit those were some of the hardest months and probably the hardest first year of my life. I was just exhausted and I got more and more tired. And even as the baby started to sleep through the night and I was sleeping through the night again, I was exhausted and my energy really just never recovered. It, it got worse and worse and worse to the point where finally, I couldn't even tolerate stress anymore. Work had been the one place where I felt like I always shined. I was doing great. And finally, even that was affected in terms of not being able to handle the stress. When I had to do surgery or do a delivery, I always felt like my life was on the line. And what if I screwed up and what if something went wrong and would I get sued? And if I get sued, would I get my house taken from me? And I just started to build up this kind of almost irrational fear. So here I was, you know, I'll never forget. I just one day after coming in late night to do a delivery, I put my head down on the nurse's desk and I just started bawling because I had no idea what was wrong with me or how to fix it. And here I was feeling like a crappy wife because I didn't want to have sex. I felt like a bad mommy because I'd had such a bad year with my son and I never had the energy to play with him. And then I felt like a bad doctor. And I just didn't know what I was going to do or where I was going to turn because there was nothing that I'd learned as an OBGYN that was really helping me get past what was going on. And that's when I actually stopped practicing OB and started looking for answers. And I started studying functional medicine and nutrition, and I learned about bioidentical hormones and anti-aging medicine. And that's when I really figured out what was going on with me. And I learned honestly more about hormones than I'd ever learned as an OBGYN. Not that I'm not thankful for being an MD and having my background in that, but it gave me the ability to go ahead and study more and find more answers. And you know, one of the biggest answers I found was that birth control pills were killing me. That was one of the biggest problems for me at that time. It was sucking my free testosterone away, which first killed my libido and then my energy and then even my stress tolerance. So if you're on birth control pills, I really advise you to think, think twice about that. But more than that, 
I had a lot of stress in my life. I was a resident, you know, I was a, a new mom. I had a lot going on, but even more than that, then I started to find out what these five hidden energy robbers were. I've boiled it down to the five that I think are the most significant. And I say they're the ones that are crashing your energy because crash is an acronym that stands for the five hidden energy robbers. And now I have to say, I'm, I'm happy to say my energy is back. Like I said, people call me the energizer bunny. And I've even been lucky enough to go on Dr. Oz because he called me up to ask for my fatigue solutions. And I've been bringing this to my patients, hundreds of patients for over the years. And now I want to bring it to you. These five hidden energy robbers, they're physical energy robbers. And you may never have thought about this before. A lot of people tell me, oh, wow, I haven't even thought of that before. You know, we know the things that are sucking our energy are our stress, right? It may be driving your kids around from place to place. It may be being busy at work or having a boss that's kind of a jerk. A lot of people tell me about that. Or the financial crisis has really hit a lot of people hard and it's causing a lot of stress. Yeah, all of that stress is sucking your energy. But there are things sucking your energy that are hidden from you that you might not even realize. And that's the things I really want to concentrate on today. So CRASH, I said it's an acronym. It's an acronym that stands for these five hidden physical energy robbers. So what, one of the things I want you to know is that we have a system to deal with stress. Our body has a system to deal with stress. And the way we deal with stress is by making a hormone called cortisol. And that's our first part of CRASH. The C in CRASH stands for cortisol overload and depletion. So you may have heard of cortisol because it's talked about a lot in the news and online and in commercials even on TV and radio that cortisol is what's causing you to gain weight and things like that. And that's when cortisol is high. But nobody much talks about when cortisol is low. So cortisol overload and depletion, either one is not good because cortisol is like kind of like a Goldilocks hormone. You've got to be in the middle. You've got to be in the right place so that you can have great energy, great stress tolerance, and even a great libido. All of those things were really tied into what was happening with my cortisol. All the things that I, that I had that I lost when I said I lost my spark. And I bet you some of the things that you're going through right now are because of cortisol overload or depletion. So basically what happens is you've got these adrenal glands. They're small glands that sit on top of your kidneys and they help you respond to stress. And one of the ways they do that is by making cortisol. So when you get stressed out because your boss is piled on yet another pile of work that he needs from you yesterday, that activates your adrenal glands. It activates your fight or flight response, right? We know about that fight or flight response and we know it's supposed to save us in an emergency, right? We know that when you look at cavemen, that they had this whole adrenal system to help them get up and run from a saber toothed tiger. So either they, it was over pretty quick either way, right? So either they got away or they got eaten, but either way it was over really quick and they went back to not being so stressed. The problem is that you live probably 75 or 80% saber tooth tiger attack. Does that sound about right on a daily basis? And yeah, we all do. And that's the problem. Our adrenal glands were not made to handle that stress load. We were not made to be chronically putting out this cortisol. And so what happens is we pump out the cortisol and pump it out, pump it out, pump it out. And that's cortisol overload. And that causes us problems. But then eventually at some point, our body can't keep making that amount of cortisol anymore. The adrenals sort of get used to the amount of stress we have and they stop making as much cortisol as you need to keep up with the stress. And this is a good thing and not a good thing. The good thing is that your body's not constantly pumping out all of this cortisol anymore because the cortisol, high cortisol is damaging. What you've heard is true. 
high cortisol can can make you gain weight. So if you haven't been able to lose weight and you're really stressed out, cortisol can be part of it. So what else? Um, you might be irritable. You might be more scatterbrained, unable to focus. You might have sugar cravings and be unable to get, lose weight. Cortisol is a big part of this. Cortisol even interferes with the way other hormones work. So like testosterone, so cortisol can kill your libido. Cortisol's got all different kinds of things going on with it. It can also, it's also a hormone that ages us. Too much cortisol will cause thinning of the hair, the skin, the nails, your bones, your muscles. It causes everything to thin out. So you don't want too much cortisol, but at the same time, you also don't want too little. Because if you've got too little cortisol, you start to feel much more sluggish. You start to feel like you need coffee and sugar to push you through the day. You start to feel like you're living at 50% capacity. That's how one of my patients came in and she put it. She said, you know, I just feel like I'm living at just 50% capacity and it's just not good enough anymore. And you know what? It's not. You deserve better than that. You deserve more than that. Your family deserves more than that from you. So we talked about cortisol overload and depletion, and those are there's three different stages. The one where you're making lots of cortisol, I call burning up. And when you're burning up, like I said, you have sugar cravings, you're irritable, you can't lose weight. You also might be anxious and have trouble getting to sleep at night or have trouble staying asleep through the night. Or you could be burning low or even burning out. And those are the stages when your body starts to make less cortisol that I talked about. And that's when you start to get more sluggish and need to really push to get through your day. And maybe you're living at 50% capacity. And that's when you're burning low. If you're burning out, you're living at even less than 50% capacity. And if you're burning out, you know what I'm talking about. If you go to three weeks to endlessenergy.com, you can take a quiz that tells you whether you're burning up, burning low, or burning out, and then gives you some, some recommendations about what to do about these things. And these are things that I address in my three weeks to endless energy program. So getting back to cortisol overload and depletion. So that's the C in crash, in our crash acronym for the five hidden energy robbers. Now we're going to get into some of the things that are the physical problems that are actually sucking away your energy that you never even realized. So the R in crash is for reactions. The R in crash is for reactions, which means food reactions. So it's foods that you're eating, that you're having a reaction to that happens kind of silently in the body, or maybe not so silently, but maybe you just don't know how to read the signs because they're not obvious. Now, when I talk about a food reaction, a lot of people say to me, oh yeah, Dr. Jen, I don't have food allergies. I know what you're talking about. You know, my lips blow up when I eat a strawberry or something like that, but that doesn't happen to me, so I don't have that. When I talk about a food reaction, I'm also talking about a food sensitivity. A food sensitivity is a reaction to a food, but the reaction takes about three days to kick in. So it's really tough because most of us, we're eating the same foods, almost every day or even every other day. And so if a food takes three days to cause a reaction, basically you're living with the reaction all the time. And the reaction isn't some of the things that you would expect. The food reactions can be really weird. You can have a food reaction that involves whole body joint pain. I've seen this one tons. You can have a food reaction that's acne, which you think is your hormones, but it actually might be the food you're eating especially if the acne is on parts of the face other than around the mouth. Hormonal acne tends to be around the mouth, but if you have acne on your cheeks or your forehead or other parts of your face or body, it might be a food reaction. You also, of course, might be getting gastrointestinal problems like gas, bloating, diarrhea. Those are like sure giveaway signs. Um, other things, you might even get nasal congestion or sinus problems. I had one patient who was all set up for sinus surgery. And I said, you know what? Give me three months, give up this one food, give me three months, come back and let me know how it goes. Push off the sinus surgery for a little while. She did it and guess what? She came back, she said, I canceled the surgery, I don't need it anymore. All right, so what's the secret foods? <laughs> As you might have suspected, one of them is gluten, 
gluten is the number one food that I see sensitivities to. And I know you might be saying to yourself, you know, I know, I've heard that I'm supposed to give up gluten. All these celebrities are talking about giving up gluten. But isn't this just like the latest fad? You know, just because Zoe Deschanel gives up gluten, does that really mean I have to give up gluten? Is it the latest grapefruit diet? But I have to tell you, no, that that's not the case. In this case, there is tons of science around why you might want to give up gluten because probably more than 50% of us might be gluten sensitive. There's a lot of gluten sensitivity going on out there. And then what's the other food? The other food, the one that cleared up this woman's sinuses is dairy. Dairy is huge in terms of nasal congestion, acne, and the biggest thing that you need to know about right now is that gluten and dairy might be sucking your energy. Yeah, I know, it sounds crazy, right? How could that be happening? It's amazing what foods are doing to us nowadays. And you might be saying to yourself, and when I say nowadays, I, I mean that because you might be saying to yourself, well, you know what, Dr. Jen, people always ate gluten and dairy. <laughs> you know, my grandmother grew up on a dairy farm and they grew up drinking dairy. And, and um, when I say dairy, by the way, I mean foods from milk. I don't mean necessarily eggs or other things that people might throw into the dairy category. I mean foods that come from milk. So what's the deal? The deal is that in the last 70 years or so since World War II, food has completely changed. Food has become an industry, just like any other industry. And in industry, we want to sell our product and we want to sell as much of our product as possible. And we want to figure out how, if possible, to get you addicted to our product. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but it's absolutely true. So what's happened is gluten is this protein that you find in wheat, basically. Yes, we used to eat wheat, and we've eaten wheat for a long, long time, centuries, but the wheat wasn't the same as the wheat we eat today. Today, it's been engineered to be different, to have a higher gluten content, and the products that we eat have been engineered to have a higher gluten content and also a higher dairy content because these are foods that people are addicted to and they stay addicted. And now they're hiding in all kinds of foods with all kinds of strange names. And you need to know what to look out for, what to watch out for. And finally, in terms of gluten and dairy, I know right now you're probably hyperventilating saying, oh my gosh, she wants me to give up gluten and dairy. Are you kidding me? Well, I have to tell you, my good friend, JJ Virgin, told me when my problem was my problem was I was feeling a little sluggish and I could not lose some stubborn weight. It was driving me crazy no matter how many salads with chicken I ate. I thought I was doing all the right things. She said to me, why don't you just go on my diet? She's got the virgin diet, which is eliminating seven foods. But you know what? Gluten and dairy are number one and number two. Those are the main things that I've had to eliminate and I've stayed off them now for it's almost two years. And you know what? I found substitutes. I found things that I can eat that I don't think are a problem. And they're not, and they don't have gluten and dairy in them and they taste delicious. So what I'm saying is I still can eat a muffin. I can still eat pancakes. I can still have pudding because pudding and whipped cream was one of my favorite things to eat before and was probably really holding me back, but I found amazing ways to eat all these foods because I found substitutes and swaps that make it easy. So food reactions, gluten and dairy, that's two of them. And the way this all happens is because when you're sensitive to a food, it can cause inflammation in your gut. And if you have inflammation in your gut, it can cause leaky gut. And the leaky gut lets things come into your body that shouldn't be there. And then that turns on your whole immune system. And one of the things that comes to put out the fire of inflammation is we're back to cortisol. Cortisol has to come along to help heal your leaky gut that you get from eating foods that you're sensitive to. So in other words, we either are causing cortisol overload or cortisol depletion depending on where we're at, if we're burning up, burning low, or burning out, you're causing cortisol overload and depletion by having food reactions. Cortisol's coming along to put out that fire. And that is one of the things that's sucking your energy. 
All right, so that's the C and the R in crash. Next, we're going to go to the A in crash. The A in crash is adrenal toxins. These are things that are literally toxic to your adrenal glands. I just said cortisol is made by your adrenal glands, right? So if your adrenal glands get messed up, you might make more cortisol or you might make less cortisol, but you probably won't make the right amount of cortisol. You may not love that I'm gonna say this, but I'm gonna tell you one of your two biggest adrenal toxins is caffeine. Okay, if you have perfect energy and you are what I call burning steady, and you don't, you're not burning up, you're not burning low, you're not burning out, you're feeling great all the time, then caffeine is probably not a problem. But if you're tired all the time, or if you're wired all the time, then caffeine is probably not doing you any favors because yet again, caffeine can contribute to that cortisol overload or depletion. And it can contribute to burning up, burning low and burning out. And you don't even realize it because caffeine is the thing you're probably reaching for when you're tired in the morning. And then when you're tired again in the afternoon, caffeine is the natural thing to reach for, but you notice it only lasts so long and you might see that you need more and more to have the same effect. You might say, oh, it doesn't even have an effect anymore. It's not even working anymore. One of the reasons why is because the adrenals say, you know, I, that's a stress that I'm used to now and I don't need to respond to it. Because really what you're doing when you, in, when you have caffeine is you're stressing your adrenal glands and you're causing them to release cortisol. And you, what you're also doing though is you're actually damaging the adrenal's ability to make cortisol in the long run, either making you overloaded or depleted. So caffeine is not a good thing if you're tired. Another thing that's not a good thing, alcohol. I know, I love my red wine. My friends and I love to go out for red wine. Um, I love to have a drink now and then. But I will notice in terms of burning up, burning low, and burning out, when I get stressed out or I get off my program, burning up is the first place I go. I start getting wired, I can't relax. I have trouble getting to sleep at night and I have to double down sometimes on some of my adrenal supplements because there are supplements that can help you with all of this stuff. And so I take some calming supplements. I created one called Calm Energy that I love because it really helps take me down. So, but back to alcohol. So when, what'll happen to me sometimes is if I have one too many, if I have, instead of my one drink, because I'm, I'm only five, like five one. So, you know, I can't tolerate a lot, but you'd be surprised the recommendations, even, even women who are much taller than I am and you know, who have more body weight on them than I do. Um, really what's recommended is about a drink and a half, pretty much as a max in terms of risk of breast cancer and all kinds of other things. So, but on occasion, yes, I will go out and have two or three glasses of wine. You know what will happen? I'll fall right asleep. And then what happens at two or three in the morning, ugh, wide awake. Yeah. Has that happened to you? I know it probably has. And then you don't sleep the rest of the night. And then you feel like crashing at six or 7 AM when it's time for your alarm to go off. Very typical. And then what happens the next morning? You get up, you have some caffeine. And then during the day you have more caffeine. And then you wind up kind of wired and in the evening you need some wine to calm down again. If you get into that cycle, you are damaging your adrenal glands. You are causing cortisol overload or cortisol depletion and you're making your burning up, burning low and burning out situation even worse. Okay, so we've covered the C, the R and the A in crash. Next, we've got the S. That is for the sugar roller coaster. This is one of the most important hidden physical energy robbers that you've got going on right now. If you are exhausted or if you are wired, it is so important for you to start balancing your blood sugar. So when I say balance your blood sugar, that means yes, you have to get rid of sugary foods. Now, some people in my office, they tell me, you know what, Dr. Jen, I don't eat sugar. 
then we go through their diet and we find out about all the hidden sugars that they do eat. Just because you bought a food at Whole Foods doesn't mean it doesn't have a ton of sugar in it. It absolutely might. And it might be masquerading in all kinds of other forms like fruit, like dried fruit, dates, figs, raisins. Those are all sweeteners. Molasses, even honey, people ask me all the time. So there's a whole list of these things that I go over in my three weeks timeless energy program so people realize about these hidden sugars. But not only that, fruit. Fruit has lots of sugar in it and just because sugar's natural doesn't make it any better. And then there's foods that are basically carby foods, which really, if you read the label, they don't have a lot of sugar, but they convert to sugar really quickly in your body. Those are probably the biggest culprits. And you know what? When I lost my spark, I was eating a cinnamon raisin bagel every morning for breakfast with, of course, a Diet Coke, because I never was really a coffee drinker, but a Diet Coke. That was what I considered my breakfast of champions. Definitely not the right thing to get me going, but unfortunately, that's what so many people are doing for breakfast these days. They're, they're eating things that aren't serving them. They're not fueling them. And that's why I, I usually do something, something like a protein shake. I'm a shake girl. One of the most important things that you need to do is to get protein within an hour of waking up and then to have protein every three to four hours throughout your day. But protein shakes, I'm really picky about them. Some things are really not very good. Number one, most of them contain dairy. They either contain milk or whey, and that's no good. And then soy, also not good, can increase your risk of breast cancer. A lot of them contain bad sweeteners, like, or like high fructose corn syrup. That's one of the worst things you can consume, period, ever, the end. You've got to stay away from corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup in particular, but even the corn syrup is bad. You want to go with natural sweeteners like stevia, lohan guo, even pure cane sugar, as long as it's in really small amounts, really small I'm talking. You want to go with very, very little sugar, you know, less than, probably less than three grams a serving would really be helpful so that you're not jacking up your blood sugar and you want to make sure you're getting a lot of protein. So because of all of this, I created a protein shake that I could use and that I could recommend. And so I've got my endless energy protein shakes, but really you've got to find a protein shake that meets all of those criteria because it's so important that you, that you follow this advice, but you follow it the way it's really meant to be carried out. Otherwise it's not going to work. All right. So the sugar roller coaster, like I said, the most important thing First of all, for you non-breakfast eaters, yes, you've got to start eating something. And like I said, it's got to have protein. So that could be eggs, that could be turkey sausage. But for me, the fastest, quickest, easiest thing is the shake. So you've got to eat protein within an hour of getting up. And then you've heard this a lot that you've got to eat every three to four hours for weight loss. And some people say it's true and some people say it's not. But you know what? For energy, I think you've got to eat every three to four hours because otherwise you can get low blood sugar. Low blood sugar is something that your body sees as a fight or flight emergency. It presses the panic button, which causes what? Either cortisol overload or cortisol depletion, which does what? It makes your burning up situation worse. It makes your burning low or your burning out situation worse. So you don't want to let yourself have high blood sugar, like low blood sugar. You also, by the same token, don't want to let yourself have high, bl high blood sugar, like I just started to say because that's where this is where the roller coaster comes in, right? What happens when you get to the top of a roller coaster if you have high blood sugar? What's high? What goes up must come down. And the higher and steeper the curve, the faster and, and the faster it's going to crash down. When your blood sugar crashes, your cortisol is activated, which can cause cortisol overload and depletion. So that's the S in crash, sugar roller coaster. And the main way to stay off the sugar roller coaster is to make sure you're eating protein within an hour of getting up and then several times throughout the day. I have other recommendations too, small amounts of fat. And when you have carbohydrates, you only wanna have complex carbohydrates, like a sweet potato instead of a white potato. Um, beans are a great staple for a slowly released carb. Okay, and um, and there's lots more things that I put into my program as recommendations and lots more things that I do every day. 
Hummus is another is a great one because it's ground up garbanzo beans, right? So you can use that. Finally, the H. The H in crash is for hormones. And this is probably the most important part to understand. So when you've got these hidden physical energy robbers causing cortisol overload or depletion, what happens is vital hormones that you need get sucked away from you. Your body is going to attend to an emergency before it can attend to anything else, right? Your body is going to take the saber tooth tiger attack very seriously. And it's going to say things like reproduction, having babies and having sex, really not so important right now while I'm running from the saber tooth tiger. So while you're running from the saber tooth tiger, your body's worried about cortisol. And if it can make lots of cortisol, it will, and it will overload you. Or if it can't make a lot, you're going to be in a cortisol depletion state because remember your supply is not keeping up with your demand. And that's where you've got this cortisol depletion. So what happens to all of your yummy, juicy hormones like progesterone, testosterone, they suffer because all of your hormones come from the same place. And if your body is constantly under saber tooth tiger attack, 75 to 80% we said earlier, then what you're doing is you're dealing with this whole cortisol side all the time, but your hormones like progesterone and testosterone are not getting made and definitely not getting made to the extent that you need. So you might be saying, well, what does that mean? Why is that important? Huh. Progesterone is the unsung hero of women's hormones. Progesterone is our calming hormone. Progesterone helps us not be overwhelmed. Progesterone helps, you know what? I'm on progesterone and I've been on progesterone since I've been about 35, probably about 10 years now. And I remember back before I went on progesterone, that I, I was standing one day in the supermarket line and there were three people ahead of me in the checkout line and I was so impatient and, and just couldn't deal with the fact that I had so many things that I had to do. I was in the express lane, of course, because I only had a few things and I put the things down and I walked out of the store in a huff because people would dare to be in line in front of me because I'm in a hurry because I have so many things to do. Oh my God, oh my God. My life was just constantly that way. The most amazing thing is on progesterone now, I would say I have more things to do than ever, but my to-do list just doesn't look that scary or that horrible anymore. I don't get as overwhelmed. And when you don't get as overwhelmed, your focus is better. Your memory is better. Your mood is better. Your concentration, everything gets better. Not only that, progesterone helps you sleep at night. And that's one of the problems I probably see in my office the most. Women come to me, I haven't slept well in years. And when people haven't slept well, they have no memory. They're cranky as all get out. Sex, forget it. That's the last thing you would ever want. And of course you have no energy because you're not sleeping. Progesterone helps you get to sleep and stay asleep. And it helps your mood, energy, memory. It also helps balance your blood sugar, gets rid of sugar cravings and helps you lose weight. And it helps you lose water weight too. Progesterone is just an amazing hormone, like I said, all around. And so much of what women suffer from is really a deficiency of progesterone. I see women all the time who've been put on Prozac and Zoloft as if they have a Zoloft deficiency, when really, I just told you all the things progesterone covers, they have a progesterone deficiency. And a progesterone deficiency is, yes, it's gonna make you feel irritable, anxious, angry and mean, depressed, all the stuff that people go on these medications for. So you can't just jump off, by the way, I'm not saying just jump off that medication because you can't just stop it abruptly. Go to your doctor, talk to them about this issue, okay? But before you even do that, get rid of your hidden physical energy robbers so that your cortisol can come into balance and you can start making more progesterone naturally. So the last hormone I want to talk about is testosterone. Testosterone is a magical hormone. Yes, for women. I know we think of testosterone for men, but women have about one tenth the amount of testosterone that men have. And it's a really important tenth because testosterone is our energy, our memory, our mood. In terms of mood, testosterone acts like an emotional shield. It helps to keep us from crying so much. 
if you're feeling weepy all the time or you're feeling like i don't even know why i'm crying at this commercial it doesn't make any sense yeah that can be testosterone deficiency absolutely um testosterone also helps build up your muscle it helps build up your bone so it does the opposite really of those things i told you that cortisol does testosterone even helps with wrinkles testosterone is an amazing hormone it even ha helps with um, self-esteem and self-confidence there's so many things it does it just makes you feel like you've got it going on and like i said birth control pills were one of the things that really robbed me of my free testosterone but the other thing was my high stress level and the fact that i was doing all of these hidden energy robbers i was eating sugar and i was on the sugar roller coaster i told you i had bagels in the morning well what did I have in the afternoon? I had a sandwich with a big roll. I lived in New York City, so I had the big, you know, sub rolls and, um, you know, on the sandwiches and they were easy to get everywhere. And now they are everywhere, I guess. And then in the evening, I would have some sort of pasta dish. So I was doing the sugar roller coaster all day long. I was doing caffeine. I was doing alcohol. I was doing all of these things. Of course, I was eating gluten and dairy because I didn't know any better. My bagel, of course, had cream cheese on it every day. And all of these things I was doing were zapping my energy, stealing my stress tolerance, and robbing me of my sex drive, and so much more. I mean, I was cranky all the time, and because I was cranky all the time, I was guilty all the time. If any of this stuff sounds familiar to you, you need to learn more about it. So remember the five hidden energy robbers, crash, C for cortisol overload and depletion, R for reactions, which are food reactions, A for adrenal toxins, S for the sugar roller coaster, and H for your hormones. There's so much more I could tell you about this, but I really need you to find out some of it for yourself. Check out three weeks to endlessenergy.com at threeweekstendlessenergy.com, you can take the quiz, the energy state quiz, and find out what energy state you're in right now. Burning up, burning low, or burning out. And the thing I really want to reassure you about, like I said, sometimes when I get really stressed out, I get into a burning up phase. And, when, and especially when I get off my program, which does happen on occasion. You know, I have to say, it's not like every day is perfect. It's not like I'm perfect. You know, sometimes when I go on vacation, I'll eat some bread and I'll eat some dairy and I'll do it for a couple of days. And you know what'll happen? Of course, my energy just plummets and I feel crappy. Not only that, I gain weight like that. It's unbelievable. And, and I just, I feel so bad that, you know what? I've decided it's not worth it anymore. And I'm going to even try to be really better when I'm on vacation. But you know what? I'm not saying I expect you to be perfect. And I'm not saying I expect every day to be perfect. But the good news is that no matter what energy state you're in, whether you're burning up, burning low, or burning out, you can get better. Your energy state can change. So this is not like an energy type that you're born with and you stay with. This is just the energy state that you're in right now based on what's going on right now. And one of the easiest ways to get back on track is to follow this to, to get rid of the hidden energy robbers and to follow the three weeks to endless energy plan is the plan I developed to really help people attack these hidden physical energy robbers. So if you want more information, go to three weeks to endless energy.com to check out what your energy type is. And I hope to see you there. And I hope that you have the best of great health, great happiness, and of course, amazing energy.